Welcome to Music Tech Explain the Visual Approach. My name is Edgar Rothermich, author of the best-selling book series Graphically Enhanced Manuals. In this video, I will demonstrate why you should consider using a trackpad when working in Logic Pro 10 or pretty much any other app on your computer. And even if you use a trackpad already, I will show you some great tips on how to supercharge your workflow. First, let's start with a little introduction. In addition to your keyboard, there are basically three options that you can use as an input device on your computer. A mouse, a trackball or a trackpad. I'm going to leave out the stylus and the pens because they are more specific for graphics applications. The interesting thing is that these three devices represent an evolution similar to the cell phone technology. At the beginning, there were only simple cell phones. That represents the computer mouse. Then the technology took a leap forward with the introduction of the BlackBerry. Think about the trackball with all those buttons. But nowadays, with the exception of truck dealers and international spies who still rely on burner phones, everybody now is using smartphones with touch screens. And those represent the trackpad. Now the question is, why do many computer users still use a mouse or trackball and not a trackpad? The main reason could be personal preferences, old habits or the fact that many desktop computers still come with a mouse. If you developed a great workflow using your mouse or trackball with highly customized functionality to work in Logic, Pro Tools or any other app, I don't say that you should change that. I just want to demonstrate in this video how the trackpad can offer you features and functionalities that can speed up your workflow tremendously that are not possible with a mouse or a trackball. To demonstrate the advantage of the trackpad, we will now have a look at the following main actions on your computer that you perform with your input device. Since the early days of computers, you have a cursor visible on the screen. And instead of the keys on your computer keyboard, you use a mouse to remotely move that cursor on the screen. In order to do that, you have to take your hand and actually grab that physical object, the mouse or the trackball, and by moving that object, you move the cursor on the screen. Now the trackpad as the input device still represents a physical object, but you don't move it anymore. The only thing that you are moving are your fingers by sliding them on the trackpad and the cursor will follow that finger movement. This doesn't seem to be a big deal, but if you are professional and work 12 or more hours a day on your computer, then holding on a mouse or moving a ball could end up with some wrist problems and sooner or later a possible trip to the chiropractor. Using the trackpad to move the cursor on the screen, you just slide over the trackpad with the least amount of force. The second action with the mouse is to click on that mouse or a button on the mouse. You do that, for example, to mark a position on your screen. In text editors, you use that to place the insert text cursor to tell the app where you want to enter the text when you start typing on your computer. On many other apps, including Logic, you use the click action to select an object or an area on the screen, for example a region or a track. The click itself is a physical action that requires that you use force to press down on the device, a mouse or a trackball. Even on the trackpad you can press down the lower left corner, like pressing a button. A trackpad, however, that functions similar to a touchscreen, gives you the option to just tap on the surface instead of pressing down on it. Besides eliminating a force and strain on your wrist, this tap-to-click functionality also provides the basis for other important functionality, as we will see in a moment. Please note that tap-to-click is not enabled by default in macOS. You have to enable the checkbox tap-to-click in the system preferences, in the trackpad setting, under the point and click tab. Please note that even if you enable tap to click, you still can use the standard click action by pressing down the lower left corner of the trackpad. Here is another important tip. 
when you slide with your index finger on the trackpad to move the cursor to the position where you want to click on, for example selecting a region, don't lift your index finger and then tap with the same index finger. Instead, you can keep your index finger on the trackpad and tap with the middle finger. This saves you an additional move. And remember, at the end of the day, these redundant moves add up. If you adapt this technique of using the index finger to cruise around and the middle finger to tap, you can achieve a very fast and efficient workflow. For example, when you select multiple objects. You keep moving with your index finger without lifting it and tap with your middle finger when the cursor is over the specific object. Holding down the shift key or command key when selecting items let you quickly select and deselect multiple items with a minimum amount of force in your hand. Practice that move and you will be surprised on how you will fly through those actions with a minimum amount of effort and force. After a while it becomes second nature and you can't even think on how to live without that. The next action is the double click. The same elegant concept of tapping with the middle finger also applies to the double clicking on an input device. Instead of double clicking with the mouse button which uses double the force, you use the index finger to slide the cursor to the area where you want to double click on. And without lifting it you double tap with the middle finger. If needed you can continue to slide with the index finger to the next destination and tap or double tap with your middle finger again. The next action is the right click. Pressing down the right button on your mouse is the same action as holding down the control key on your keyboard and clicking the left button on your mouse. This was originally a workaround because Steve Jobs didn't allow to have two buttons on an Apple mouse. A right click on an area or object on the screen usually opens the shortcut menu, also referred to as the contextual menu, because the menu that opens displays menu items that are relevant in the context of the object you click on. So how do we perform a right click on a trackpad? that doesn't seem to have a left or right button in the first place? The answer is gestures. The trackpad recognizes if you tap with one finger or multiple fingers. The common gesture for the right click action is tapping with two fingers. That gesture is enabled by default in the system preferences in the trackpad pane with a checkbox labeled secondary click. So instead of clicking on the right mouse button or holding down the control key when clicking, you just tap on the trackpad with two fingers. For example, the index finger and the middle finger. Please note that for this gesture you have to lift the index finger from the trackpad before tapping with two fingers. Here are a few examples of all the spots in logic where you can right click on it or better tap with two fingers to open those specific shortcut menus. Right click on a region. Right click on a MIDI event. Right click on a track lane. Right click on a track header. Right click on the background of a channel strip or more. Just right click on various areas in logic to find those hotspots and you will be surprised on how many of those shortcut menus are available in logic. The next action, dragging, is an important action that really shows the big advantage of the trackpad. Just look at what you are doing when tracking an object with a mouse or trackball. You have to click and hold down the button on the device and now move the device, the mouse or the trackball. This is a situation where you could easily cramp up your hand if you do that action a lot during long work hours. Now look at how easy and effortless this action is on a trackpad. You slide with your index finger to the start position where you want to drag an area. Now the only thing you are doing is also placing the middle finger and ring finger on the trackpad. So you have three fingers now touching the trackpad. Now when you slide those three fingers, you are actually dragging the cursor. 
Look closely at my fingers. I don't lift the index finger that I use to move the cursor. Anytime I add two additional fingers, the sliding movement becomes a drag movement. I can lift the two additional fingers and continue to move the index finger, so the selection remains until I add the two fingers again, which will change to a drag movement again. You might have to practice that a little bit to adapt it to your muscle memory. However, I guarantee that once you are used to that gesture and switch from a trackpad to a mouse or trackball, it feels like switching from driving a Tesla and go back to driving a horse carriage. This dragging gesture is called three finger dragging. And unfortunately, it is not enabled by default in macOS. Not only that, some genius at Apple's macOS developer team decided to bury that feature way down in the system preferences, where nobody can find it. See if you can remember the following steps. Open the system preferences. Click the accessibility icon. Now in the sidebar scroll down and select mouse and trackpad. Now click on the trackpad options button. On the sheet that slides out enable the checkbox enable dragging and make sure three finger drag is enabled from the pop-up menu. The next action is the long click. It is a special action that Logic is using. That means instead of quickly clicking on the mouse button, you click and hold the button for about a second before releasing it. Remember, you still have the option to press down the left corner of the trackpad to perform an actual click action on a trackpad. However, with a trackpad you can also use a gesture instead, using the three finger drag. You slide down with the three fingers on the spot for a tiny bit. Logic has a strange and slightly confusing implementation of that long click action. Here are three examples. Number one. You can long click on the ruler to enable the cycle range. But it doesn't work the other way around to disable it. Number two. Instead of using the right click to open a shortcut menu, remember tap with two fingers, you can also long click on those spots. Number three, the sense button is a really strange one regarding the click requirements. To assign a bus to a sense slot, you click on an empty slot and the pop-up menu with all the buses pops up. If you selected a bus, it now shows that active blue sense button on that slot. However, if you click on the same double arrow button on the right, nothing happens because now you have to use a long click or a right click to open the sense menu that lets you access the buses plus a few other options. By the way, if you move the cursor over the button of an assigned effect slot, then you will also see those double arrows to open a pop-up menu. But here you use a regular click instead of a long click. The next action is scrolling. This is the most natural gesture on a trackpad because people are now used to it with all the touch screens on their smartphones and tablets. Just think about the Stone Age approach of scrolling with a mouse. What you intend to do is to scroll a page up or down on your computer screen. But here are all the hoops you have to jump through. Step 1. You take your hand and grab a physical object. Object number 1. The mouse. Step 2. You move that physical object, number 1, to move object number 2, the cursor on the screen, over a scroll bar, which is object number 3. Step 3. Now you have to click and hold down the mouse, object number 1, when pointing with the cursor, object number 2, at object number 3, which is a scroll bar. Step number 4. While keep on pressing down on object 1, you have to move that object 1, the mouse, to move object number 2, the cursor, and with it object number 3, the scroll bar, in order to move yet another object, which is object number 4, the actual object, the page you wanted to move up or down in the first place. Now compare that to the simple elegance of a trackpad. Just one step. 
you use two fingers, index and middle finger, to slide up or down on the trackpad, which represents the area on the screen, the page that you want to move. That's it. And again, imagine how often you are scrolling pages during a day and instead of all the steps of moving an object that moves an object that moves another object, you just slide around on your trackpad. That's it. For the scroll gesture on the trackpad, you are using two fingers and slide them up, down or left, right. And please note, if you have your index finger already touching the trackpad, you don't even have to lift it. Just add the middle finger to it and you are ready to scroll. Lift the middle finger and you are back moving the cursor. On a big logic project, scrolling with the trackpad is a breeze, with no additional modifier key required. You can scroll up, down or left and right just by sliding with the two fingers to the corresponding direction on your trackpad. And switching between moving the cursor and scrolling the page is just the difference of placing the additional index finger or middle finger on the trackpad. macOS has that two finger scroll gesture already enabled by default. In the system preferences, trackpad, scroll and zoom, there is only one checkbox called scroll direction natural, which means when you slide your fingers down, the page also scrolls down. If you slide up, the page will move up. All those years of using computer mice, we get used to the unnatural way of scrolling. Think about it. In order to move a page down, we had to move the scroll bar up and vice versa. Many computer users seem to have a hard time to untrain that unnatural behavior of scrolling the wrong direction. The last action is the zoom action, which by itself is reason enough why you should think about using a trackpad because this action is not available on a mouse or trackball without using additional modifier keys. On a trackpad, you just use the same gesture that you are familiar with on your smartphone or tablet when zooming in and out of a picture. You use the so-called two-finger pinch. Any app that uses a timeline like Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro lets you quickly zoom the timeline in and out horizontally by using the pinch gesture. Even other Apple apps like Text Edit, Preview, Pages or Numbers let you quickly zoom in and out of the document without looking for the zoom menu and selecting a predefined zoom value. By the way, to zoom vertically in Logic in any editor window or tracks area, you just use the scroll gesture while holding down the option key. Try this gesture and use it and you will speed up your workflow tremendously. Just make sure you understand the rules and functionality about what area is zoomed in. I explain all the little zooming details you have to be aware of when zooming and scrolling in my book Logic Pro 10 The Details. The main rule is to make sure that the playhead is placed at the position that needs to stay focused when zooming in and out. Otherwise, you are constantly scrolling and zooming to find the right place you want to work on. Here is a quick demonstration with a Logic Demo song where I use all those gestures with a trackpad. I move the cursor by sliding with the index finger. Without lifting it, I can select regions by tapping with the middle finger. I continue to move, sliding with the index finger to select another object. Whenever I add the middle finger and ring finger on the trackpad, the action automatically becomes a drag movement. Lift the two additional fingers to continue to slide and add them again to make another drag selection or tap with the middle finger to deselect the previous selection. Sliding with the three fingers on an object like the region will move that region, or a MIDI event, or automation control, etc. Tapping with two fingers, like the right click, lets me open the shortcut menu on that location. Sliding with two fingers lets me scroll horizontally and vertically. 
Using the pinch gesture, let me zoom in and out horizontally, which of course works in the workspace and also all the editors that have a timeline. Here's a little tip. You can see a lot of disclosure triangles on the track header representing track stacks in this project. Option clicking on one disclosure triangle opens or closes all disclosure triangles in the track list. This, by the way, also works in the mixer window. Using the trackpad functionality that is built in with Mac OS will already improve and speed up your workflow. However, you can take it to the next level by using an amazing third-party utility called Better Touch Tool. It lets you assign a wide variety of actions and sequences to pretty much any gesture that you can think of using your five fingers on the trackpad. In addition, it has a full-featured key commands utility like Quickies or Keyboard Maestro, fully customization of the touch bar and even support for regular mice. Here are just a few customization I use with Better Touch Tool. Logic has all kinds of key commands for forward and rewind the playhead. However, there are none for forwarding and rewinding by one beat. I assigned a key equivalent to the key command forward and rewind by an eighth note, assigned an action Better Touch Tool that repeated the command and used the following gesture to trigger that action. Place the middle finger and ring finger on the trackpad and tap with the index finger to rewind. Place the index finger and middle finger on the trackpad and tap the ring finger to fast forward. I use the same gesture to step through tabs in the Safari browser or the Finder window to go forward or backwards. I assigned the spacebar to the following gesture, tap with three fingers. Now I have the option to start or stop the project from the trackpad without moving my hand to the keyboard. Logic 10.4 added the long overdue feature to press anywhere on the workspace to place the playhead at that click position. Unfortunately, you have to hold the shift key when clicking, so you need two hands. Not only do I want to just click without a modifier key, I want to start the playback right at the click position. For that, I created a sequence of two actions, shift click and pressing the enter key, and assigned that to the following gesture. Place the index finger and ring finger on the trackpad and tap with the middle finger. How many times a day is a dialog or an alert window popping up where you have to click OK? That means you either have to travel with your cursor to that window, usually in the center of the screen, or you have to take your hand to the keyboard and press the return key. However, if I have my hand on the trackpad, I don't want to do either one of those actions. I like to tap with a special gesture on the trackpad where my hand is. The gesture I'm using is holding down the middle finger, ring finger and pinky finger and just tap with the index finger. If you are using Pro Tools, then you might have noticed that it doesn't allow you to use the zoom functionality with the pinch gesture. That is something that drives me nuts when switching between Logic and Pro Tools. But no problem, better touch tool to the rescue. You just assign the gesture pinch in and pinch out to the Pro Tools key command for zooming in and out, which is the key R and T. Okay, that sums it up about the use of the trackpad and its gestures. Please try them out and practice them to see how it will speed up your workflow, not only in Logic, but in any other app on your computer. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to read my free Logic and Pro Tools tutorials and check out the books in my Graphically Enhanced Manual series. By the way, on Apple's iBook Store, you can download free samples of all my books in the special interactive multi-touch iBooks version, the best way to learn a software application. All the links are available on my website, ding. .com.